John Pair of Rolls, these fellas. Look mean, you very fat. Shits himself when you put him in the ring. Poke him with a stick and watch his bollocks grow. Do like a dog fight, Turkish. We've lost Vinnie Magalesh. You're gonna have to repeat that. We've lost Vinnie Magalesh. Well, where the fuck did you lose him to? It ain't as if he's a fucking pair of car keys. And it ain't as if he's not a big, fat, fucking obese Puerto Rican now, is he? We're not backing out. You bet your bollocks to a barn dance you're not backing out. We've changed your fighter. Oh, Poha fucking Carayo. Your lady friend got voice. And who might you be changing him to, sweetheart? You won't know him, but he's mustard. Mustard? I don't care if he's Muhammad Imad fucking Booster March. You can't change fighters. You still got your fight? No, I'll lose all bets to the bookies. You can't change fighters at the last minute. So no, I don't have my fight now, do I? You fucking brat. You can take bets at the fight. Put a lead on her, Turkish, before she gets bitten. And you don't want to get bitten now, do you, sweetheart? Make sure your man goes down in the fourth. You understand me now, don't you now, Turkish? You were on thin fucking ice, my pedigree chums. And I shall be under it when it breaks. Now fuck off! E aí, bichão? Porra! Welcome to another uh, installment of the Renato Laranja Show. Porra! I'm so excited for this one. It's also the fifth one. So we have a five episode, that one. And we're gonna have a special treat for you. We're gonna have one of the greatest mixed martial arts, Valley True doll hero of all time, uh, to visit here. And I've been waiting for a long time to have this guy on here, so it's a big surprise for you. And also, we're gonna do some stuff where I'm gonna, you're gonna get to see me, you're gonna get to soak me in, as always, and to look upon me and to my picture, my physique, and also all that stuff's there for her. And then also, we're gonna have a special trip where I'm gonna go out into the world and talk to some of the fans face to face. Stay tuned. My f it's that cheap slip. Okay. Oh, we're hauling. Welcome back. As I said before, you in for a hair treat today because we're going to have one of the Mount Hushmore of MMA legends. This man is a legend to the sport and I don't use that term lightly because I myself am also a legend. I want everybody to give a warm uh, hound uh, to applause for uh, Ken Shamhawks. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, Frankie, how you doing? You came, you came to your brother? Yeah. You came to see your brother? Where he? Yeah, it's uh, Frank. Oh, no, I know, but where, where's you, where's Ken, uh, what was, you came to, where's, uh, where's Ken? Frank, it's Frank. Shannon. Where is Kenny, though? You oh, came and you brought, to, you came to give company to, to Ken? No, no, I'm not, I don't know where Ken is. I haven't seen him, I'm months. God. 
So you put me, you put me to a to a, a, a echo. You put me to a position like that. It's fucking embarrassed. Like, oh, I'm there. Now I gotta come up with some stuff to talk to this fucking guy. I'm gonna come up with some of the questions I have. I had him involved in some of the questions before, but boy, you gotta you gotta tighten your ship. You gotta hunt a t uh, tight. Ah! <laughs> Man, that this, oh, what a pleasure to have you, man. You right, surprised buddy. me. You surprised yeah. me when you came here. Look at All you. Right. Smaller than you used to be. What are you, small? What? Yeah. Is that a compliment? Ah, you're a little smaller than you used to be. You had a, used to have it, that big muscle. Now I'm big than you. I look like a different weight class to you. <laughs> it, I know. Okay. It's okay to laugh. Okay. We're here. We, we're having a good time here. On my show, everybody is, uh, feel relaxed. You, I gave it to you some water. You have a mug. And uh, a lot of, for the people that didn't know, remember, everybody know Ken Shamhock, the one who was, uh, gave, be, uh, gave to, to, to um, uh, Hoist Gracie, one of the historic fight in the early UFC. And then also, a lot of people didn't know that he was have a little brother who was even short and dark. And... Um, Hey, let's talk about you now. Let's not focus to Ken Sham Hockey. Let, let's let's focus to you. What tell the people why how 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 you ended up to be so dark? Well, Ken and I are both adopted. We're not actually related. We're we're both adopted by the same man. So I'm I'm actually Mexican. Mexican, Indian, English, German. You didn't you didn't know this? It's getting hot to here. I'm not I'm not even Irish. Ken's not even Irish. We're just. What is Ken? He's a Me he he. Please, please tell me that, that Ken's not uh, Mexican. It's true. I don't think he's Mexican, but I'm not sure what he is. I think he might be like German or something. But we're not actually Irish. Our our dad was Irish. Our dad adopted us through the group home system when we were troubled kids, and then that's how we got the. Shower. Thanks to my God that you had a white, white father and also a white brother, to to show to you the hike path because as, as far as I'm concerned, you was got into a lot of trouble. You was did a lot of that, did a lot of Mexican stuff early to your life. Yeah, but it wasn't because I was Mexican. Okay. Because I grew up in a disadvantaged and poor community. I wasn't, in it's a, not because I was Mexican. You, in a, you think it's because I was Mexican? No, Pohai, I did, didn't said that. I said that you was because you, what kind of neighborhood is a Mexican neighborhood community? Well, yeah, I, I grew up in a white family. My Pohai. mom's white. My sisters and brothers are white, okay. and I just, I'm brown. It's not, uh, yeah. you have a problem with brown people? I don't have a problem. As you can see, I'm a brown, but a lot of people don't call it that one. They say it's more, look, Egyptian cinnamon. Okay. I, I, I refer to myself as a Latino. That's, you heard it here, a Latino. Uh, what a, 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 a hair opportunity to be a Latino living in L.A. area. It's refreshing to see another one of you, and I'm, uh, I'm proud of you. And you know what I'm gonna Wait say? Wait a minute! Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm, uh, what, you, can, can I just say something? Yeah, you can. You, you seem cultureless country. and clueless right now. Do you know that LA was founded with Mexicans, by Mexicans? Yeah, they found a lot of Mexicans here, and they're gonna send a lot of that ones out of there. That's what they're founding. A lot of that didn't have the paper. Okay, you, me, I did the right way. I was married a white woman. Uh, and she was, we was married for a while, and I was got the green card. I don't, I don't know what, what that has to do with Mexicans. Listen. Or me being Hispanic. The or people. Me, me talking about my book and my show. Like, what, I, I don't. We're going to get to your book and your show in a minute. But you know what I want to focus on right now? I want to give to you some credit now. I didn't mean to step on your toes. I talk about Mexican people, okay? You're a proud uh, Latino American, and everybody you know everybody loves Mexicans and want them to be here, okay? Now, the, the heel thing was, what we didn't want to be here, and we're glad that it's gone, is your braces, <laughs> okay? okay? And I want to thank you, the bottom of my heart, and all my fans out there who was proud that, and glad that you was got hit of your braces, because when I was tuned in to see Strike Forcey, every time I was praying to my God, I pray to my God that I'm not going to see you to have you, your mouth look like the kid from 16 Candles, okay? I don't want to see you to, to every chimey you have it like that. And it was, it, it, it was distasteful 
and also it was, uh, it was churned my stomach to see a 49-year-old man to, to have braces for, for 20 years or however long you was, he had that one. So I had braces. I had jacked up teeth. I fixed them. You chompers was it? You chompers was a black mark to the sport. Okay, if somebody had to say it. Okay, and I didn't want it to 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 I didn't want it to 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 be dark, to, for this to go into a dark direction. But you know, you chompers was uh, yeah. You know, you said you did a lot of the sport. You fought a lot of people or whatever. The biggest fight to your life was against the cavity creeps. And you was lost, that one. That's why you had that stuff. And I'm surprised you didn't have the one that's connected to the back you had. And you're going to put there and have it look like a, uh, like the microphone that Bobby Brown was due to my prerogative. And you was born with an advantage. You had one extra tooth that was tried to get out of there. You, you got hit at that one. That was so, my eye tooth. Okay, you I what? see you, my eye tooth. Your eye tooth. I could see you with okay, it. Okay, well, uh, Do you know Bill the people Gates. with eye teeth yeah. are exceptionally more smarter than everybody else? Listen, uh, I don't know about an eye tooth. I got an iPhone, and Bill Gates was that one. He didn't decide to develop that one, so you're the only one who has an eye toothy. And it was turned to a blue tooth because it was cavity. He, he uh, who was have some of that black stuff on there. Let me, let me, let, let's, uh, let's, let's cool down and talk to our commercial, commercial breaks. Poha, one of the most important things you have to remember that you're not going into the, the studio by yourself. You also have the almighty, first you have my God, then you have uh, Booster March, but then you have IBJJF on your side. And sometimes you're gonna have to invoke that one. That one thing is that they all gonna try to play footsies on your feet. Poha, poha, no, no, time, time. What are you gonna do, you heap the knee? When you have one of this barbarian is to try to use some catch wrestling stuffs on your leg, you're gonna have to say, you can't do that one. No. You're, you're, a, you're a blue belt. Cool you jets. You can't do that, my brother. You got a I, IBJJF. And you're gonna have to chalk the IBJJF rules. And each level have the same different rules for that one. You gotta use your brain. And you gotta use technique. That's not just catch wrestling. You, you can't do that, you gotta wait till you're older and you're more seasoned. I want you to do some shrimp. Yeah. We hauling? Ah, are we back with you can, you Frank Shamhawk. Uh, we was just uh, in a discussion over chompers. Um, I feel like we was sank our teeth into that one enough. Let's see, you've called me short, old, uh, Mexican, and metal mouth so far. Where, wherever you want to go, I'm with you, but that's, where you're, that's your score. Touche. Uh, Do you even know what that means? Yeah. And let me tell you something. I think maybe with the last subject who was bite off more than, than we can chew. Let's hunt through some of his promo. Yeah, uh, yeah, your book. What is that? I wrote a book. It's about my oh, life. It's called called Uncaged. mixed martial art for dummies. No, that's my other book. Yeah, you wrote a a, a book about uh, a bunch of. Okay. I wrote a book called Uncaged about my life. But before that, you wrote a book I, called a Mixed Martial Art for a, by a Dummies. For Dummies. Okay. By and, the Dummies series. Okay, by a dummy, a dumb. No, it's for dummies. Specifically for a group of people who identify themselves as dummies. Okay. And there's open so membership hide off for the you. Book, hide, yeah. oh, that's funny, but hide off, yeah. the book, off the bat, from the bat, you, uh, 
you assuming that everybody who don't know as much as you is on some that people is gonna spend their hard-earned money to you is a dummy. How presumptuous and, and, and arrogant to you. And you 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 falling hide into the stereotype about Frank Sham hockey. And some of the stuff a lot of people said about you, I'm starting to believe now. So I wrote a book. All right. To help people that didn't know about mixed martial arts get more educated. To help people that aren't in love with themselves and their own ego and the size of their cock to find a positive way to train in martial arts. That's what I wrote the book for. I also wrote another book called Uncaged to help inspire people. I wrote another book called journey. Uncircumcisey. I imagine it's short. No, it's fucking too long. Mm. You wanted the unabridged, you want the abridged version. The one did have too many vein on there. You might... Probably paper thin. The skin is known to be paper thin because it's like velvet. It's like velvet, head velvet cake, but only has purple cake because they have also some properties of dark brown. Also, in the certain light, you can find some purple on there. And the head, you can find maybe some different color on, on to there. Let's talk about your acting career. What about? I like to act. 2005, one of the great movie of martial art history, and also just one of the great movie in general. It's called No Holes. Come on! It was this Chinese play a lackey, a goon, who was uh, terrorized uh, this man, David Dunn, and you and Handy Couture. I hate him. You should. He's my third arrow, my red robe, death by hand. He'll know the Brotherhood soon. Switch your feet. He was also motocross stars or something like that. <laughs> Hey, who's that? It's Damien Slade, He's the champion of the world. And you was also part of a, a secret cabal who was where had uh, stuff and you want to kill somebody in a fight and it's like a, a cult or something like that. Tell me about that experience you filmed out. Well, the movie was called No Rules. There was no cult. But we had a team, we had a group, um, Randy was our fearless leader and I was kind of the bad guy. But it was the first real feature film on mixed martial arts for, you know, feature presentation. I thought it, I thought it presented the sport pretty well. I had high hopes for it and it did really well internationally. It did okay here nationally. Where it did good, in Mexico? You were, you were, you, I've, you were a big star there, I'm sure. I think it actually did well in Brazil and uh, throughout Eastern Europe, but I think we did an, uh, okay in Mexico. And you remember what your name character was in there? It was Jamie and Slade. Oh, that's right. And it was said that you was from Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, in the Brazilian. Thing. Yeah, you was Brazilian. That was the first time I played a Brazilian. Yeah, and I felt I, dirty. Yeah, I bet. And yeah. I was wonder why they they I felt they, uneducated, yeah. and unfocused. Oh, you you felt that way? Yeah, it was you terrible, know what? Terrible feeling. That's that's very funny, and you you're very clever. You're a very bright guy, okay? But you're in my world now, okay? You're a squirrel trying to get a nut. You, 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 you people was begged to me to have you on here. So he remember that, okay? And uh, you, it was won a, a Hasbury Award for your work in there. I know who's, let's just take a break. That's my symbol, old man. Mine! What are you looking at? Don't be eyeballing me, boy. I'll bust your ass. 
If I can't have the symbol of the Brotherhood, no one can. Ah! Oh. What the fuck's going on here? No, 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 no. Now, get out! Get out! You just made a big mistake. I'll see you again, punk, huh? Oh, yeah? Okay, welcome back. I'm here with uh, Frankie the Shamhawks, entrepreneur, TV ho t TV broadcast, broadcast, and producer, and producer. He was produced that bar has you. So you headlined the first USC event, Brazil. I did. Yeah. Who were you? Who you fought in that one? John Lober. Okay. They say Lober versus Sham Hockey, Ham Hawks. And then everybody paid the money to see that. They said, "Boy, can Sham Hockey is gonna come?" And then who you get instead of the 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 Sylvester Stallone? You're gonna get the Frank Stallone, the Frank Sham Hockey. Frankly, it was a disappointment to everybody. So another great fight you was involved. Another person who had a big head and was famous for being a Mexican American. Cheeto or cheesy. You fought good that fight. you fought that guy. It was a good fight, okay? You had a lot of stuff to say about him, that he was pull open your cuts and stuff like that. There was some strong words, some strong accusation. If there are accusations, I'm telling everybody what happened. I mean, guy kneed me in the head and then stuck his fingers in and tried to split the cut open. I mean, I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. I thought it was incredibly dirty and, and um, you know, bad sportsman like. But, you know, I still whipped his ass. It wasn't, it didn't hinder me, but, you know, it was, he stuck his freaking fingers in my head. I mean, it's disgusting. Yeah, that's a lie. What do you mean it's a lie? Watch the videotape. Listen. Okay. Watch the video. I'm yelling it. He's sticking his fucking yeah. fingers in what my I head. Saw, well, let me tell you something that I saw, uh, Frank Shamhawk. I got the scar on my head. Frank Shamhawk. What I saw was a man who was get slapped again to the face and was go like the nature boy, Hick Flair. You say, hey, woo, like that. Okay? And let me tell you something, brother. You didn't look like the nature boy, Hick Flair, in my books. You was look like... It, the Hickey the Dragon Steamboat, but only skinny version of that one, and also more short and dark. You know, I'm not the only one who is hesitant to deal with you. Dana White was had his own issues with you for a long time. Dana White was publicly on Hacker to say that you was a weird guy, and he don't understand you. And he was extend the Olive Gardens to you, and you didn't want it to go with him. So why, uh, why he said that kind of stuff? Am I to believe that Dana White is just, just don't know what he's talking about? Well, you can certainly believe that. There's probably some truth in it. Nah, Dana recruited me when I was the biggest athlete in the sport, and I told him no. I didn't believe in their vision. I, I saw their marketing plan, and I, it didn't make sense at the time. You know, they were, you know, they've, grown to take control of the industry but at the time they were lost and losing a ton of money and I told them no I built the competition they took serious offense to that but I mean it, it's it's just business you know I don't do business with them because I don't agree in the principles they do business by yeah you do a lot of I, as far as I'm concerned you do a lot of monkey business monkey business yeah that that's that's uh, yeah I'm not no, gonna standing up for something I'm not gonna mix words having principles and believing in Certain things is not weird, it's not monkey business, it's being a good and rightful person. And people that bend and take it and do whatever they need and sell themselves for money, those are the people that are hurting. That's the people that's hurting, huh? You know who else is somebody hurting? Hurting? 
but heal bad. Hanzinho was hurting. From what? Yeah, you think it's funny. Is his wallet too heavy? Seriously, what's he hurting from? Hanzinho, I'm sorry. I'm gonna let you two slide uh, because I wanna get you the bottom of that. I wanna bury the hatchets on this one because it, Hans is my brother. And you was lure him, you was lure him to strike for, see? And you brought Hans in you over there who's a legend. He didn't have you did that. He was, did you a favor. And you came in there and how you, he paid that guy, he was kicking to the back on the neck and to the C5. And also you kicked to the brain stammy. I guess you learn a lot of stuff from, uh, what's his name, Keith Hackney's, to the chin and to the brain stammy. To the chin, then the brainy. You was brain him. Yeah. Enzo was looking for a way out. He was tired in seven minutes. He was, it sounded like he was gonna have a heart attack from, from lack of air. I barely touched him and the minute the referee said something, he went, oh, and started groaning. And, and look, at, I take nothing from him and you guys are obviously from the same cloth. He found a way to win. Yeah, I'm proud to be from, from the he same cloth and I'm gonna find a way to win. I'm gonna find a way to win. He found a way to yeah. win. And for that, I have the ultimate respect for him and he stepped in there and for that, I have the ultimate yeah. respect for him. Yeah. And he deserved the victory because he beat me that night. Yeah. He found a way to win. He did beat you like, beat that me. night. You and he may have, you, he may have acted maybe, his way yeah. out of there. And he may have took, you know. At the, least he could have acted his way out of road. there. On no holes, you wasn't acted your way out of all wet paper bags. What? Carl, what's going on down there? No, no, no. What's wrong with you? You fallen for that bitch? Huh? You are fucking crazy. You're not making it easy on yourself, my brother. And when you kicked to Hanzinho to the back, to the back of his Jerry Curl, <laughs> that's not fucking funny. <laughs> when, yeah. He does have a little curl thing going there. What's up with that? It's called it's a hairstyle, mm. and it's a, it's a popular hairstyle. And just because he's also, he's also dark like you, and you, you, you kicked him, you kicked him to the back. You sh it's like a Benedict's, uh, what his name is, Arnold or Arnold Jackson's. The one who was in the Civil War was, it was betrayed, uh, the, 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 the Colonel Sander. And you, you remember the way you was betray him and it was like a kick to the back of the neck and to the Jerry Curl of every fucking Brazilian. And, and, and I still had a bones to pick with you from that. So if you wanna be honest, that's why I even took the interview. Cause I wanted to look to your face and also to you fucking chompers. And you know, you can change your face and you can change your teeth, but you can't change the person you are. Go truck a marsh. Poha, now is the time on the show where we tackle the hot topics. I'm here with uh, Frank Sham Hockey, and he's on the hot seat. I know we have our difference, uh, Frank Sham Hawk, but right now we're not going to pull any punch. We're going to get to uh, the bottom of the barrel. Poha, first hot topic. Should there be, a lot of people think, uh, the fighters don't have a voice and they're not taken care of proper. Should there be a minor league? Some people think there should be a minor league to the, to the UFC and to MMA. Talk about that. 100% there should be a minor league. 100% there should be an amateur 
league that becomes the foundation to the next stage up, which is the UFC or any other professional league. Every single professional sports team has an amateur league that they support, grow, and harness to, to make the future. We're not doing that in our sport, which is going to provide us with a crap. You future. said we as if you're still involved in it. You don't, you're, you're old news. Why? Yeah. What, who's going to pay for that one? The promoter should pay. The guy that making a billion dollars should pay. The promote. He's just trying to make some money. He's, a, he's one of the, 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 the growers. He's one of the job creates. And the, the fighter is one of the tech. Mitch Harmony will tell you that. Yeah, I, dis I disagree with that because he is a manager of the business. What, are you so, a socialist? Everybody nah, should pay into but, that? But here's what you have a to do. A single payer if system. If you do not build the future and you live off this moment, then what are you going to rely on for the next generation? What are you going to rely on to create talent? This is the problem with the UFC now. Their stars are diminishing because it's all the time and there's no talent. Yeah. You need to take time to create talent. Because the fighters is lazy. And a lot of the promoters was try to get them to do stuff and to give them some of the monies and they just want to, to, to just get paid. All they care is to get paid. I don't think about that. I think, I think it's more of about fear. It's not a proven path. If I, if I want to become a professional fighter, I go to a martial arts gym and between that place and going in the UFC is all up in the air. Anything can happen. There's no way to get from there to there yet and there should be an amateur league where you go in you develop you're scouted you present you develop your craft so when you walk on stage in the ufc you can walk it talk it fight it and present at the highest level of martial arts what if they're That's gonna what if they're gonna take some of that funds from out of you pocket the announcer's pocket and then to give to that i'm fighters. happy to pay Poor i huh? think everybody should give back here's the thing if we don't invest in the future we don't have one that's where we're at right now people are getting hurt they're pulling out the next generation they're not stepping up because they weren't trained to do it and we do learn that in the amateur leagues i don't know what up, mma and game. pulling pulling out getting hard to pull out it, that was always the best way as far as i'm concerned to forget i've had a lot of issue chest up watch all that so that's a different stuff okay poha next hot topic uh, a lot of people think uh, a lot of controversy is around a, a beautiful, gorgeous, light-skinned young gentleman who is fight on the female UFC. He's called Fallon Fox. Mm. What's your take to that one? That's a tough one. Because anytime you start changing gender and you have these built-in roles in society, it's going to just buck up against where everything goes. What built-in holes do you have? Well, I mean, we are a society where men and women are separate. We have clearly defined roles of what we think we should be. So you believe men be. and women should be separate? I'm saying the society has developed with separation. Where is a woman's place? A woman's place is wherever she wants it to be. But in tr a traditional society where men were fighting the wars and gathering the food and killing the animals, women were at home taking care of the children well, and uh, taking care of the crops and taking care of the family. Now you're getting to the, the heel yeah. hood of the thing because you're a traditional guy. I'm well, this is a traditional society. Exactly. You, not, you, as you've, yeah. you are very This is how society came and about. And you and I have the same view on that. So, yeah, society is going to came to be about if we're going to keep it that way. And I think it's okay to switch genders. I think it's okay to move your sexuality around if you want to do that, as long as the rules are clearly defined. If you're a man, compete as a man. If you're now a woman, compete as a woman. Poha, so you think it's okay for a Fallon Fox, a grown man, to take on the whole of to fighting some women? who have, maybe he, did they have the same amount of hole? How many hole, what's the hole that they have, tradition? A woman has two, two three holes. holes. You said that everybody has the uh, different, a woman oh, has roles, a hole. Oh, roles, roles, yeah, not holes, not holes. That they have, yeah. a woman has three, a man, tradition, have that, and their butthole. And no, no, have no, a, these are, these maybe are, the hole to his dick, but you can't put something to that, unless a Q-chip, if you was, had chlamydia, or you had, AIDS. Next question. The coach of MMA. A lot of people think that MMA has went away from the tradition of the martial art, the martial spirit. I know a lot of you uh, believe in the bullshit way from Japan. But a lot of the people believe that you're going to listen to Hawk and Hall, you're going to listen to Eddie Bravo. Uh, you're gonna do some hat music and wear some clothes with a traditional fucking uh, tribal tattoo on there, and you have listened to some biohazard. Ah, or it's to guar, you know, like that. And they don't respect 
the heel stuffs from martial, from MMA or NHB or what I call Val Chudo. Check the floor. I don't even really know what you just said, but in a nutshell, we've got a problem with our culture. And the problem has been that the current generation is all about money and drugs and steroids and, and shave your head and tattoos and there's not a martial arts culture and the problem is, is when you start stop focusing on the arts and the development of each individual person and why that's important and you just get focused on fighting it becomes less exciting and that's where we are now so it's you want guys that guys to be an artist as well they you should want have them some, to do the arts of course they should we should see the best of that person we should see the absolute best human presentation possible and the only way that's possible is for them to have a platform and to have developed their artistic ability. Fighting is not enough. I will turn it off eventually, because unless I know them or I care about them, or there's some story or there's some interest or there's some cultural reason why I should watch, it's just fighting. So I'm to be expect that I'm not supposed to watch fighting. I'm watching some arts. No, I expect that when you watch fighting, you look for the art and it's delivered to you. And right now it's not delivered to you. You have to look for it deeply and hope that you find something to relate in that cage with. That's what's missing right now. And it should be written on the wall, it should be carried in each individual corner, and it should be spoken from the lips of these athletes. It sounds like you don't want a, a, a martial arts. You want more, you're looking for a pizza. Uh, it's not deliveries, it's Dijon. Okay? So when I watch a fight, okay, I'm used to the old school, call me old fash. I used to, girls, if I'm gonna fight a woman, she better, be somebody I'm dating. If I'm gonna fight a man, then you're gonna watch that. You're not gonna worry about the art. Or if I'm gonna deliver uh, some stuff to, you, to your house or nothing like that. I think you're living in a dream world and I think you took one too many punch from Boss Hooten or you took a slap to the face from Boss Hooten and was shake your brains. You heard it here. Uh, the first topic, he want there to be a minorities to have their own league. Uh, you can put the blacks and other people like that on there. Fallon Fox, he was believed that you can be a traditional hole and women have three hole and then men have only two. And on the culture of MMA, he don't want you to watch from the UFC, he wants to be delivered and he wants you to watch some arch. Well, we, we did another show. Yeah, and we was found out a lot of interesting stuff. At some points, uh, me and you, uh, it was hockey for a moment. For a, it was a hockey hold, and but we was uh, persevere. We was overcame our difference to uh, to hopefully enlighten the people and to finally give yourself a voice because you have a platform now. I was gave you now the tools to go on and maybe make yourself a little bit of money or something like that. You can maybe buy a small place for your new wife and your child. And I'm glad that I was provide a platform. And maybe some of what I have is gonna hub off to you. And uh, now my fans are gonna look out for you. Maybe gain some fans to Twitter or something like that. See where you can take. I'm gonna say that, you know, I, I made a, we might have had our difference, but I wanna tell you that I'm still remember you. I know from one legend to a guy who was named himself the legend, I wanna give to you, I was had a surprise for you. Something that maybe you can brush your teeth, you can take care of you, you can take care of you, you chompers. And if you ever had a, any problems in the future, you can use that one to brush that, that teeth and keep the, the, your breath clean so you didn't have the halitosis anymore, okay? So we're going to say goodbye to you now. Right there. And, you know, I'm a, you know, I can't be a big man. You know, we can have some words, we can't fight, we can't do all that stuff. And then afterward, you know, we had a beer or something or a wine cooler or a laissez. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll have my people get back with you. Yeah, a lot of my people can talk to you, people mm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is weird. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's the hardest stuff, you know. You, you, you're all right, my brother. You, you're weird, and it's okay to be weird, okay? So I'm going to have you to, to uh, uh, how you say, mañana, see you, see you on, see, how you say in, in Spanish? Adios. Adios, okay? To my God, I'm going to send you on your way, and go with God. Have a nice life. Another one on the books. These ones isn't getting any easier, Borosinho. Uh, I was, Haley tried to make you proud today. I was got revenge on that Mexican scoundrel who was drilled you to the back of your head and was almost killed you. And was almost and was almost, and was almost took you from me. We gave him what he deserved today, and we made him to look like an asshole on national and public TV, and also the internet, and also flicks, flicks points. With those light-skinned black guys, we tried to make a channel. <laughs> Tell you what, you curls has never looked more glorious. And I see that glimmer is back to your eye. I was took the monkey from off your back. Now we can test easy and we can think about all the pussy that we was hooked up at the seminar and also the expo. I love you, my brother. Sweet dreaming.